is a mariner's compass, and it was made by a man and hand pieced and hand quilted. I bought it in Indiana at, near the in the Amish community, and I do a Trump show I call Quilting Through the Bible, and I needed a mariner's compass, <laughs> and so I found this one and I told Kenneth I said, "Ooh, there's a pretty one back there." He, I got it for five hundred and ninety-five dollars. Wow. Wow. So that's a one very reasonable price. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Yeah. It's and feasting him. He, he's the one at uh, Wagner's that has the little house behind his house that he, you know, takes mail orders and all. And of course, we've got a timeshare. We've done that several times up at Bridge Lick, and we went over there several times. But the, but the, after I bought that, the next two or three days, we went in. He was green and big. Because <laughs> we spent the bucks. This is a fish's tail. Okay, that's what we didn't tell you about this. This is a crown of feathers. Have, how many of you have heard of a crown of feathers? It's something that it, they used to find when they had feather pillows. And when someone died, they'd take the pillow apart. If they found one of these in it, they thought the person had died and gone to heaven. I bought a box that had books in it, and it was an 1864 book, and it had this in a plastic bag. And I said, that's a crown of feathers. I had heard Mamma and Mother tell about it. And so it just happens uh, about a month later, there was an article in one of the book magazines, and this lady had made a... Uh, flying geese. She'd done a circle of flying geese and she said she made that in memory of her friend's sister that died at 13. And then she told the legend and she said it's a Tennessee legend. And so you want to look at it and you can pass it down and let everyone look at it. But there's no way that you could do that. You couldn't take feathers and do it that way. And I asked Susan Savage doctor pathology and for and anyway I said how does it do that she said I don't know but I just hope when I die I've got one <laughs> <laughs> okay so this is a fish's tail is the name of this pattern and this is an 1800s quilt you can tell by the fabric and a lot of the uh, pattern is deep you can see it's disappeared and a lot of your fabric from back then if it had black it's gone because the black dye had acid in it and it eat holes in it so uh, that can sort of help and this is a, a son of it and my grandmother made all of the grandsons an overall bill and all of the granddaughters of Sun Bonnie and Sue. And this one was the one she made for Carlene. And I didn't bring mine, but I brought a smaller one. Then I made the one for Becky, uh, I mean for Martha Beth, is that one. And Becky cut all the Sun Bonnets out. And the center one is one that Mother had appliqued, and then I put them, appliqued them on and, and, and took it. That's the kind I've been looking for. That's what my grandmother made. Yeah. And this is just a top, and it's an 1800s. Mm -hmm. Tell about the cobalt blue and the turkey red. And this is an improved nine patch. And uh, I don't know, it's... it's uh, this shade, it's what, uh, uh, I bought it at an, eight, an estate sale, and then I hand quilted it in 2009. And this is a double wedding ring that my grandmother made me. Mm -hmm. 
most of us have a double wedding ring or grandmother's flower garden or a flower garden. This is hands all around, and my aunt made this one, and uh, Becky disappeared. I was going to ask her again when, when does it say when the sookie died? Uh, 1980. <coughs> and uh, she died on Becky's birthday, was killed in a car wreck. But uh, so she, this is the color she liked. She liked the fall colors, and this is all uh, probably. Machine piece. No. Nope. Oh, machine piece. Yeah, know. but it's handy. We'll kill it again. And this one is made out of whipped cream. I don't know if any of you remember the <laughs> whipped cream fabric, but mm -hmm. when um, Oma Harvey was a salesman for Neely Harbor, and he gave Mother a lot of his samples. So she used them and put them together, and it's real lightweight, and she used it on top of her electric blanket to keep the heat in. And this, uh, Betts Ramsey used it for a quilt show at Traveler's Rest, and when we took a group, group up there uh, to see her show, I uh, went in and I don't know how many of you know Rose Wright, but Rose went in and she said, you may have been with us, Candace, but we went in and, and Rose said, now Bernice, that's an ugly <laughs> And I said, do you really think so? And she said, don't tell me that's one of your quilts. <laughs> she, I said, well, Mother made it. She said, that's the prettiest of the quilt I've ever seen. What is whipped cream fabric? Pardon? What is whipped cream what fabric? What come I doing? It's just soft. Yes, it's it was like from the 60s and 70s. Mm -hmm. Is it cotton? Didn't they make no, a lot of babies? It's cotton. Uh -huh. yeah. Dresses, tops. Uh -huh. It's like soft. It's just real yeah. soft. You can see she had all the lighters today. That, uh, that helped the heat in without right. having the weight. Oh. The, the, this, of course, I said, they said I said it was a feather pattern yesterday. I know better. It's a fan pattern. <laughs> uh, Miss Annie Brunel Barfield made this, which was my stepfather's first wife, and I was fortunate to inherit a lot of her children. This one, I inherited the top. Her, her youngest daughter gave it to me, and I hand quilted it, and it's won several free records in some of the fairs. Beautiful. And that's one, that's one that when I have a space, I'll cut, uh, I'll cut mm -hmm. me a pattern. I cut me a pattern. I just fold it like you would do snowflakes and do something to fill in that pattern and make my own designs a lot of times to quilt. Oh. I love one. this yellow and you cannot it. find this uh -uh. <laughs> And this one is, what's the name of this one? Uh, Queen of the May, and this was made by Miss uh, Annie Pernell Barfield, and, and uh, like I said, she did all of this. It's hand pieced and hand quilted. <laughs> Can't find that anymore. And of course, this is an Irish Jane, and my grandmother made this one and uh, she liked to put these, of course we call them ice cream cones now, but she did this before there was ice cream cones, so this was something she did to make her put a little bit larger. What did you call this? And this Irish is an chain. Irish chain. Irish chain. Oh, mm -hmm. It's a double Irish chain. You can have it in different blocks. Is the border around? You see it with a solid background. 
is the border around it what you're calling the ice cream pattern? That's really nice. And this is the mother of this. Late 1800s to early 1900s. And it is a, um, it's called a sugar bowl pattern.